Hey, 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 beautiful people. We are so excited to be on for Faith Focus Friday. And um, I know that our beautiful Warriors is on right now. So I took the liberty of trying to sandwich in our quick little um, time in God's Word uh, right in between the um, halftime because I am a Warriors fan too. So we are going to talk fast and quick so that we can go back to watching the Warriors game. I pray that everybody's um, faith focus Friday has been great, which simply means that I pray that you've had a wonderful time with your family. Uh, you've had some fun and your mind has been geared towards faith, um, faithful activities, if you will. We're excited to be coming to you. I see my dear sister Lori McNeil on, and we are excited for you being on. Mwah. Bless you all the way from the West Coast to the East Coast. Love you dearly. And um, we're going to move expeditiously right into our topic on today. There's so much that I want to say, but let me first uh, give great honor and, and credence to, to God. And you guys know that, that join us on Fridays, it's my time to, I can just talk about the word of God the whole entire time. My heart's desire and my heartbeat, it's always to teach and to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have a unique opportunity to do that um, in the marketplace, but I absolutely love um, speaking and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, the word of God. And blessings to you, my dear brother, Jim Payton. I love you so much. Um, blessings to you for just being who you are. And I just believe that there's a special anointing on God's word today as you and I believe God's word uh, today. Um, and so we're just excited. We're absolutely excited. It's been an extraordinary day. Um, I always feel a, a different kind of anointing. I will say this um, on our Faith Focus Friday. And I don't know if it's because um, it is about God's word. And I am anointed and called to preach this gospel and to teach this gospel. But there's another anointing that just always surges on these Faith Focus Fridays. I'd like to give a shout out to Pastor Chris O'Neill. God bless you. I believe it's in the book Ministries and I believe it's in the um, city of Stockton, California. God bless you. And our brother Jerome Benton. Bless you, bless you, bless you. And um, uh, for those who are... Um, wanting to know I am definitely losing weight. And um, you can tell, I can tell a lot, all of my clothes you can see, um, along with a lot of other wonderful things too. Let me um, go ahead. We're just, we're not waiting for anybody. I am actually just trying to slow myself down because I feel the anointing of God. When I teach the word of God, and I teach it every single day, um, because I teach it to my children and I teach it to myself in my personal Bible study time. God has told me to take the six months, first six months of this year and to really get into his word and let his word really be everything. And I know that we're supposed to do that, but um, there was a real press in my spirit from the Holy Ghost, from the Lord himself to really make sure that I line up uh, my life with the word of God, not cliches, but the word of God. And there's something very, very powerful about God's word, something about God's word. And so um, as a way to expect God's word uh, for our lives today, I'm just pulling up um, a scripture um, here and then we're going to uh, go on. And so, um, Father, we thank you so much for an opportunity right now to be able to come to you on Faith Focus Friday. We thank you for every person that is going to join this broadcast, whether it's now, tomorrow, or next year. We thank you that you have a right now word for them, that their faith helps them to create an opportunity where there is no impossibility. And we thank you that your word will not return back void, but it's going to accomplish what it was sent out to do, and it's going to prosper in that thing. Father, I thank you that your word right now is activated and charged because of the faith that you've allowed us to have. God, and I thank you that your word will not uh, return back void, but that it's absolutely going to do everything it was sent out to do, to heal, to deliver, to set free, and most importantly, to save our souls. So I thank you on this Faith Focus Friday that your word is settled in our heart. God, your word is settled in our heart forever, go oh God. And I thank you uh, for the opportunity to worship you in this manner. It is in your son, Jesus Christ's name that we pray, praise, and bless you. 
Amen and amen. For those of you who are joining, my name is Lakita Long, and I am a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am also um, licensed and ordained and blah, blah, blah. Um, but I love um, to really expound and to talk about God's word. And I love for God to use each and every last gift and talent that he himself has given me to be able to to speak and to teach, to uplift, one, the body of Christ, two, to bring recognition to those who have no knowledge about who God is. It is my desire that the Holy Spirit in me would speak to the Spirit in them, and they would have to come to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ on their own. And so we utilize the gospel of Jesus Christ to do that and whatever else he allows us to do it. So for our topic on today, um, we're talking about having the faith to do the impossible having the faith to do the impossible. And um, this is, we're going to be coming from uh, Romans chapter 10, and we're going to look at verse 17, but the whole chapter 10 is what I want you to focus on because it's a very powerful discourse that's happening with the Apostle Paul, and it's looking at a variety of different things as it pertains to faith and righteousness, but primarily about the ability to see God um, beyond the limitations of our reality. And sometimes you and I, because we're humanistic like that, we only see God in in the reality of where we are. And God is infinite. He is omnipresent. He is omnipotent. He is omniscient, um, all-knowing, all-powerful, and he's everywhere all at the same time. Those are what those three words mean. And so because of that, there is this um, tendency to either, one, think that God is so big that we cannot uh, actually tap into him. But that's why I love when the Bible talks about in John chapter 4, verses 24, that God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And he, he gives us that verse after having gone through Samaria. And when he told his disciples, I must needs go through Samaria. Because he knew that there was a woman that he was going to have to encounter at the well. And he was going to have to become the living water for her. And in that moment, um, her just going to get water, which is what she thought, um, ended up turning into a, a righteous opportunity for her to have salvation and to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as he presented himself. And so the word of God does that for us in the book of Romans chapter 10 as well. And it gives us a foundational aspect of how you and I have to use our faith in order to live out the lifestyle of the impossible. Um, Everything today is about what you see, what you hear. If you can't see it, if you can't hear it, then it's not there. Um, because we live in a show me kind of atmosphere where, you know, got the internet, social media, Instagram, chat, and, um, you know, Snapchat. And we've got all these wonderful things, right? We have all of these things. And one of the things that I found out in doing my studies and kind of thinking about this aspect of living a lifestyle of being a Christ field believer, um, that you must, you and I must absolutely, um, live in the realm of the impossible. Um, not a spooky kind of impossibility, but an impossibility that is wedged in the word of God and has its ability to mobilize and to move us into the place where you and I should be. Um, and I'm a very conscious about this particular topic and particularly because faith is all I've known. Everything that I have in terms of my testimony and who I am today is because of faith. While I may have degrees, the truth of the matter is um, everything. And even when I was sitting at this very important uh, meeting for the college that I work at, um, and was selected to be a part of this prestigious um, committee and um, Senate and all these things in, uh, in our state capital of Sacramento, I realized in that very moment and instance that um, I, I actually felt like I was Joseph a little bit, sitting at a table amongst people who um, have been there, are knowledgeable experts, degreed, all of that, and yet faith in me said that... Um, I can be at the table because God has set that thing up, but it also was because I've always believed that I should be at those tables and not out of an arrogance way, but out of a belief that God called me, that God protected me, that God invested in me, that I did the work that I needed to do to be at the table to make the impact that I needed to make. And so with that though, 
it's imperative that I utilize my faith outside the four walls of the church. And we know this Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, uh, verses one, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the very evidence of things not seen by it. The Bible says in verse two, the elders obtained a good report. And because of it, the world, as we know it, as they knew it, were framed because of that faith. So I wanted to give us an establishment of what faith is. It's what you and I cannot see. It's the substance of what we hope for. And it's absolutely the thing that we stand on to believe that we're going to get it right. And so with that, being um, the truth, uh, then we have to use our faith. We have to use our faith in order to experience the impossible. And I want to stir up your spirit as my spirit has been stirred up by God's holy word, that if you and I are going to have faith as of a grain of a mustard seed, that we can be able to speak to our mountains, be thou removed and cast into the sea, that it be no more, then it's not so much the amount of faith. It's not about that I've got a lot of faith. It's just that I have faith and I'm willing to use the faith in order to see things move. And so Jesus sets this thing up for us um, as he allows us uh, to see our brother, the Apostle Paul, who we all know, who was Saul at the beginning of the book of Acts, um, around about the fourth chapter or so. And he was all doing all kinds of things to the Christians. And he was, he had some kind of way about his lifestyle and killing them and holding the coats and, you know, all those things. And, um, he l knows 14 different dialects. He's smart. He can move in and out of the various providences and, and, and Rome and Jewish and all of those types of things. And then he has an encounter and here we go. He has an encounter with God on the road to Damascus and he's blinded by a light and this light blinds him for three days. And so what happens is in his blindedness, you know, then, uh, the, the prophet is sent to him and speaks into his life, which the apostle Paul, who was Saul at the time had to, by faith, believe in this thing, right? He had to believe in this thing, which is now becoming the word of God through a man of God to tell him what he should do. And because of the apostle Paul's belief, because he used his faith to believe what was stated, what was said, then what began to happen uh, was that the Apostle Paul began to do the absolute impossible according to the faith that he had in Christ Jesus. And because of it, he obtained sort of this level of righteousness, right? And so we know that in the book of Acts, fourth chapter, all the way through the seventh or eighth chapter, where we see our brother Deacon Stephen getting stoned, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Fast forward over here to looking at the book of Romans chapter 10, where we look at verse 17, which is our main uh, verse for our text about the ability to have faith that can allow you to do the impossible. The Bible says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Can I caution each and every last one of you believers in these last and evil days, can you do me a favor from heart to heart, believer to believer? Can you do me one favor and to make sure that um, you are hearing the word of God, not cliches, not things that make you feel good or feel well, but that you're hearing the word of God because in, in hearing the word of God, the Bible says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if people don't have faith, it's because they, there's no hearing. And if they can't hear, it's because the word of God is not going forth. I do declare and I believe, according to what I've read in scripture and what I've experienced in my own personal life and with others that I've been so fortunate to lead them to um, Jesus Christ or to present the gospel in such a way that they would feel obliged to lift their hands and say, I want to know that savior. Um, it came because... I spoke only about uh, the word of God and because they had a heart to hear the word of God, truth emanated in their hearts, settled in their spirit, and they, by faith, said yes to God. Okay, that's how it happened. That's how it happened for you and I as well. When we really think about the conversion experience between you and your Savior or me and my Savior, it happened because faith became uh, open to hearing the Word of God. And in the process of hearing, I allowed the Word to do something powerful in my life because I believed it. There we go with the faith part. Because I believe the Word of God, um, the Word of God did something powerful in my life. Now, the Word of God will do something powerful whether we believe it or not. But the Bible says, if we make the Word of God of none effect, 
because of our unbelief, right? So believing the word of God actually uh, gives us an opportunity to experience the power behind the word of God. And that in lies uh, where you and I can absolutely experience the impossibility. The impossibility of your dreams actually coming true. The impossibility of seeing the blind open eyes. The possibility of them that are on their deathbed, raise up, pick up your bed and walk in 21st century time, right? So um, when we look at Romans chapter 10, verses 17, once again, we're talking about having the faith to do the impossible. And I want to caution the believer uh, that faith comes by hearing. So if you're not hearing the word of God, then your faith is going to be minimal and it will be drowned out by, by your doubt. You have to be in faith. You have to hear faith. You have to be faithful. You've got to do things that would allow you and I to be faith-oriented people. Um, it's not merely about going to the church building, but it's allowing the spirit on which the building was founded on, which is Jesus Christ, to absolutely be inside of our heart. So faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Now I can only be as strong as what I hear and what I know. And if what I hear is not the word of God, then I'm weak at best. I'm weak at best. And so if you and I are going to do the impossible in our lives, we are going to have to have faith and it could be faith as of a grain of a mustard seed, but have the kind of faith that says it will not be according to uh, the book of Hebrews and James, uh, dead works. We're not going to have any dead works. Faith is not dead. Faith is alive. Faith is an activating portion of the believer's decree that Jesus Christ is Lord. So when you and I have faith, we automatically tell the world that I believe that Jesus Christ is alive and I believe he's alive in me enough that I'm going to get up and do what thus says the Lord, whether whether I see it or not. I believe God will give me a job if that was my declaration of need. And I believe it so that I'm going to dress up and I'm going to go and I'm going to look for the job. I'm going to go to various businesses, call various places, send out my resume, whatever it is. Faith only knows how to get up and go do something. So when you and I are not in faith, we will all know that because there's no level of productivity. There's no level of activation. Faith is an activating force inside of us. And how do we know? Because Jesus said, let there be, and it was when he and the Father was in themselves at the beginning of the creation of the earth. They said, let their waters come together and, and create the heavens and the oceans and separate the firmaments from the heavens and the earth. I mean, all of that was faith talk. And he said, and let there be, and there it was, and let there be, and there it was, and let us make man after our own image and in our own kind. So faith has been speaking for eons and generations to come. God's just wondering today, even on this faith Focus Friday. When will you have the faith to absolutely believe him for the impossible? When will you have the faith to believe that you don't have to have another migraine headache again? When will you have the faith and the audacity to believe that God's word can cleanse your blood if you got a blood disorder? God's word can cause your heart that's been broken because of emotional strain and distress that God himself through the power of his word and through the hunger in your spirit that God will heal your brokenness and because you ask him in faith. Everything that you and I ask God is a faith move. It's, we don't have it. We ask him by faith. And so with the by faith, we can get it. We can get it because we trust not in ourselves to supply it, but we trust God's word. And because his word will not falter, nor will it fail, nor will it go away. His word is settled in heaven. Psalms 189, 90, 189, 19. Because his word is settled in heaven, we have the surety that whatsoever God says or whatsoever he spoke, it shall be. And I just wanted to encourage you that we have no time to play it safe. And if you're not hearing the word of God, you'll always play it safe because there'll be nothing in your spirit that will give you the opportunity to feel comfortable to move and an expectation of faith. See, faith knows no boundaries. Faith says, I walk on water with you, Jesus. How do we know it? Ask our brother Peter. And so some of you right now find yourself walking on water in a variety of different situations in your life. So I speak to you to get the distractions out of your life whether it's a distraction within your own self and take a hold of the faith of God that is found in the word of God and began to move the way God says to move. Then you can look at the possibility and see God's hand 
move. I'm going to give you a prime example. So, you know, when I say that my life is about faith and it's about faith-focused stuff and things of that nature, um, it, it has never failed to me to watch God's hand move, to watch God's hand stretch forth. Now, I am cognitive of the fact that we live in this like crazy kind of society. And even in our churches, um, we don't really see the fullness of the faith that we should see or the activity that comes because we have faith. If everybody who says that they are faithful and they have faith in God actually had faith in God, there would be an explosion in our churches on Sundays. There would be a eh, glory shot. Glory to God. There will be an explosion in the house of God. The, we would have to hit the floor because we couldn't stand in his presence. If everybody really had faith in God, hallelujah. If everybody believed God like they say they believe, then there's some things we would just never say on Facebook, in person, because the faith of God, the will of God won't allow us to desecrate the purpose of God in our lives. And Every time you or I speak doubt, we desecrate the will of God for our lives. We tell God we don't believe him. Then he said, listen here, if you don't believe me, you're going to perish. He said, but if you can't believe me, whosoever will believe, come on here, scripture, whosoever will believe, they shall be saved. And he said, I wish that none should perish, but all should come to the knowledge of who I am. But you can't come to the knowledge except you believe. And that's what the apostle Paul was talking about in Romans chapter 10. He starts off to just share it with the people that, Look, they have a zeal. He was talking about those other people when you go back and look in Romans chapter 7, 8, 9. And they were kind of creating a distraction in the church of Rome and uh, creating a distraction for the saints. And he said, yeah, they all got a zeal, but they got a zeal that's not after a righteousness that's founded in Jesus Christ. That's what he was saying in Romans chapter 10. Everybody got a zeal. Everybody loved Jesus. Hallelujah. Everybody got something that they say, but none of it has an indication at the end of the day that simplifies that the righteousness of Jesus Christ is what I'm standing on. You can say that you're of Christ Jesus, but if the fruit of what you're saying don't line up, then we don't have what you say you have. And that's just the Bible. Because I just believe glory to God. When you have faith as of a grain of a mustard seed, there are some mountains in your life that you don't even have time to post about it because God in the faith that you have in him moves so quick you don't got time to talk about it. I'm talking about what I know. I'm talking about what I've seen God do from paying for my car that was $900 that I didn't have. I have a hybrid and just boom, somebody called to check in on me and just to see how I was doing and I'll just say I'm doing great and just got to I'm going to be Ubering it around next week and this, that, and this was a couple weeks ago and this is what I got to do and I'm so excited about all the wonderful things that God is doing and grateful for God in your life and, and the person at the end of my conversation said, well, do you think that the mechanic and the people will take my American Express card? And I said, what? They said, I want to pay for your car to get paid for and done right now. $850. But here's the faith part because here is the faith part. The faith part is that she told me that she had wanted to send me some monies to my ministry because she pours her and her family pours into my ministry and send the money to the ministry a couple of weeks before. And actually a couple of weeks before is when my car had the problems at the beginning of January. But something just wouldn't let her do it. And probably because I was still driving the car even though I really shouldn't have been. And when by the time that she called, the car was no longer able to be driven at all. So what did God do? Store Store up, store up, because I believe by faith it was going to be done. I really was just waiting until I got paid, but God knew it didn't matter if you got paid. I want to show you I'm going to pay it because you are doing what I called you to do. Just wait on me. I really didn't know. I really didn't have an expectation. I was like, hey, Uber is Uber. I have no issue about nothing going on in my life. Drama free, and I'm free for whatever people think that I should be. I know who I am, and I'm really okay with that. So when she said, though, that uh, the second time around when she wanted to send the money, you know, that when it came down to it, now you listening? When it came down to it, the amount that God was having her to send to me just to the ministry is the amount that my car needed to be fixed. $850. And you saying, whoa, that's a lot. But when your life is blessed by God's word through the servant of God, $850 ain't no money. When your life is being blessed by whomever is pouring into you, you'll give $8,500. I know I would because the times that 
that we live in, we need people that are going to speak the truth, speak God's word, and we need to see the deliberation of God's word activated in their lives. So we're talking about utilizing faith in order to do the impossible. My whole life has been impossible. The fact that God could save this little ghetto girl from Long Beach, California, who had a mirrored amount of issues in her head, hated her skin. I hated other people. I had all kinds of issues going on. So only God can change this mind and give me a mind that was after him. Only God can change this mind when I thought the world was totally against me and nobody loved me. And I would just do all kinds of damnable things, even to my own self. And God said, I got a purpose for you. I'm going to give you a compassion for people that they won't even understand why you love them so much. You won't understand it because the faith that I'm going to give you is going to be birthed in the fear that you left from. See, a lot of times the things that we left is what built up the faith that we have, right? God gives each and every last one of us a measure of faith. Romans chapter 12, verses three. He gives every last person a measure of faith that we might be able to be connected to him in that way. But what I love about God is that he doesn't leave us the same way that we came to him. He doesn't leave us where we're just only just barely making it. He said, if you can, but trust and believe all things are possible to him that will believe. Who are we believing in? Jesus the Christ. If you believe in Jesus the Christ, this brother rose himself from the grave. Come on here. And if that brother is in me, then what does that mean? It doesn't mean he's divorced of the power that he had when he rose himself from the grave. It means that the same power that's in Jesus Christ, if he's in me and I'm in him, that same power got the same kind of elevation to be risen from the dead, dead emotions, dead dreams, dead. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we all have the ability to utilize our faith to make the impossible happen. Now we can't tie God's arm. We can't tie his arm, right? We can't do that. But what we can do and what we should do is use this Bible the way it should be, not to damn or condemn folks because the Bible, therefore, there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but who live in the spirit. And those that are in the flesh cannot please God, but those that are in the spirit, they have life and peace. So we understand what the scripture says about those who are living the spirit. My main concern is, are you doing what you're supposed to do if you say you're in the faith? I don't want you telling me about sister so-and-so and brother so-and-so. I want to see you live out the impossibility for your lifestyle and for who God's called you to be. Don't you tell me you're a work in progress when you say you pray to a holy God every day. At some point, the holiness of who God is is going to back you up and command your spirit to get in alignment with his spirit. At some point, the same God that keeps talking to you about this, that, and the other should convict your spirit. And I'm just wondering, I'm just wondering are we sitting long enough? Are we listening to the word long enough? Because we go back to our scripture, Romans 10 and 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If it's not the word of God, you shouldn't be listening. And the word of God is not uh, uh, something that's a cliche. The word of God is not something that somebody else. It's spirit. It's spirit. And the Bible said that it's life. Ooh. Glory to God. It's spirit and it is life. And when you have both, then you can have the impossibility. There is nothing that should hinder us when we're in Christ Jesus. And we operate in the dynamic dunamis power of faith. The faith that we have in Christ Jesus. So I pray in the Holy Spirit, even right now, as we come to a close for our Faith Focus Friday, that you would be so ever encouraged, sincerely, as I am, I watched God do something today in a media. I'm not even sure what really happened. Um, and, uh, but that's not my job to understand what really happens. My job is to be a marketplace evangelist where I can create an appetite for the sacred place in the marketplace and for people to come to know that Jesus is still yet Lord, no matter who you are, no matter how many zeros you have in your bank account, he alone is Lord. He alone is God alone. And so as we make our way uh, tonight, tomorrow, I pray that the word of God encourages you beyond where you've ever been, because except you and I move like the grain of a mustard seed and believe with that level of faith, you don't need more faith. You just need to actually do what you need to do with the faith that you have. It's not about the more. 
It is about your willingness. The Bible says if you first be willing, it's according to what a man have and not according to what he have not. So if you're willing, I always say our willingness is our currency. That is a motto that my ministry lives by. My willingness, your willingness to live out according to God's creed and his word. That is our currency. That's our modern day of exchange to where we can always be in the marketplace making exchanges and making things happen, not because of us, but because we trust God has us. And that, my friend, is so, so powerful. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every person that hears this gospel, this word, that your spirit man is stirred, that your mindset is truly fixated on the will of God. I pray that it has caused you to be convicted. I pray that it backs you up in the name of Jesus Christ and that you do not ever look at this gospel and you don't ever look at Christendom the same way. I pray that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the living God who said, let there be, I pray that he would arrest you right now. That he would arrest you right now because it is true my sisters and my brothers, that truly our willingness is our currency. That, that is the truth. And uh, I believe that when we say truly, uh, God, your will be done. And I kind of got that way today. Your will be done. Um, not my will. Your will be done then we can see the impossible take place. I pray that it has been a blessing to each and every last one of you as it has been a blessing for me to be able to come to you with this gospel. Be blessed and be encouraged on this Faith Focus Friday. If you're just chiming in, we've been talking about having the faith to do the impossible, but you must use and believe the word of God. I love you, and God bless you forevermore.